I think we can get going. I think we have kind of like a, a good a good group of people in. Um, uh, for those who just joined or already joined a couple of minutes ago, um, hi everybody and welcome to our latest uh, webinar, uh, Craft Craft IO webinar. Um, I am super excited today because I have a good friend of mine joining um, and also an amazing product leader and a guy with a huge cool map behind him, uh, Uri Betesh, uh, joining us today. So hi, Uri. Hi, Rad, and uh, thank you for the compliments. Uh, <laughs> it's really important for me to hear that I, from you. I, I know, I know. So as, as uh, for those who haven't been uh, so far in, uh, in craft webinars, so we try to keep it, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a, somewhere, it's a, a hybrid between webinars and, and, uh, and podcasts. So we try to keep the conversation very lively and very um, kind of like uh, on point. Um, if anybody has any questions, so you have the Q&A um, Zoom thingy. <laughs> I don't know how you call it, but in a Zoom Q and A Zoom thingy. Um, Zoom. I think every now everything now in Zoom is secure, so you have so many. Everything looks very secure, um, so it's a Q and A button uh, at the bottom on the right there. So if you have any questions, feel free to add them or just add them to the chat. I mean, we're gonna try to answer as much as possible. So uh, we're gonna have a bit of a conversation, and then afterwards we'll open it for uh, for you guys uh, and ladies to uh, ask your questions, etc. So with that in mind. Let's get going. So again, Uri, thanks for joining. Um, before we kind of kick off, it would be great if you tell, obviously you and I know each other, but uh, if you tell people on the call, um, who are you and you know, kind of a little bit about, your, a bit, a bit about your background and also a little bit about your background from a product perspective because you've been doing product for what, I think more than 15 years or so? About. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, thank you for having me, Elad. Um, I wanted to join those webinars for a long time, and finally I have the, the chance. Um, so my name is Uri Betish, and i am been in product, as you said, for 15 years. Um, I started my journey um, in product management in the retail space, in the inventory and price optimization um, in retail. And then I moved, um, um, I managed the entire product portfolio of, um, of a company called Retalix, um, got acquired by NCR um, from, from the US. <clears throat> it was an array of products um, in retails from the enterprise level and the supply chain up to the point of sale. And um, um, a little bit after the acquisition, uh, I started my own company, Datos Health, and um, Datos today is um, is a remote care um, platform, software only, targeting to the to the healthcare, um, you know, um, hospitals, providers, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and, um, and and I and I started this startup. I think it's a little bit different from from many other startups. Uh, I started it after a lot of experience in product development. Um, Product management and product development and, and managing development uh, um, groups um, together. And yeah, so I'm happy before, to be before, here. With... Before we go into that, was just for a second, just sorry to cut you off, but um, just in terms of your background, so you are coming from an engineering background or from, yeah, I mean, are you, all, how do you say, the scientists or the poets in terms of like the product managers? Like there's like two camps, you know, people who come from marketing and business more and people who come more from uh, like the engineering and development background. So which one are you? To be honest, I think I'm I'm a little bit in the middle. I, I am an engineer. I never wrote um, like proper code. Um, uh, is, that, I, is that because you didn't write good code, or you just didn't write code at all? I, I <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Just, no, just... I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I was there, right after the um, uh, university. I, I was more um, in the operation research, um, so I, I wrote some algorithms. Apparently, it was not that good algorithm, so because I didn't, you know, continue with that, and I moved to product management. So I, I haven't wrote like actual code and submitted codes and and into uh, um, into builds and things like that. But I am around, you know, code and code development uh, management. Um, all, all, all over and um, yeah. I see, and then in, in Vitalix, before you got acquired, how big was it? Like, how big was your product team? Just to get a sense of like, you know, the team's advantage. That, that's actually quite interesting. Uh, I think that um, in, in Vitalix, I managed more than a hundred um, uh, product, uh, my, my product team was more than a hundred employees, but it was in, in, uh, uh, included the product managers, but also all the business analysts that wrote the stories. 
inside the the um, the, the, edge, the the scrum teams. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can imagine if if you have one product or business owner, it depends how you call it, um, per scrum team. Mm-hmm. Um, it's around one to seven usually. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. All right. And then, okay. So then I, I cut you off while, as you were starting to talk about uh, Datos. And so please do share a little bit of how, so you mentioned you've been like kind of like in a large-ish and large, of course, NCR is a huge company. Um, and then you moved into a, like you started your own company about what, five years ago? Yes, exactly. And um, if it's okay with you, let, let, let's talk a little bit about the product experience in both companies. Uh, and, course, and I think it's, so in, 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 in the previous days in Retalix, it was, it still, it was a product led, I want to say product led services, um, but it was a product led company. We sold products. Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, um, it was every, like imagine you, you're now implementing the point of sale to target. It's a huge waterfall implementation, right? There is like a big bang of, of go live, um, it's not like, uh, okay, I'm going to change it here and then I'm going to deploy it. I'm going to A-B testing. No, you have a, a full, um, uh, a lot of uh, POS terminals that you need to go live in, in, in a day. Yeah. And with that, we, we, we wanted to, we all the time wanted to implement Agile and Sprints and see and, and to understand how we can be more, more responsive. But uh, to be honest, it, it never worked. Um, because you, you have a go live date of the entire um, chain and that's it. It's a, it's a waterfall. And no matter how you're going to look at it, um, um, you know, in a large enterprise B2B, it's very hard to do, um, to, to work in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, in a true agile mode. Yeah. Also, you, really- you guys, you guys also had like, I mean, actual physical point of sale, right? So it's like, it, that even makes it, you know, in a way. No, no, actually, no, no, no. We, no? we, we never, uh, it was a software only company. Um, and we implement our software on, on the terminal, on, on, oh, on hardware. I see. And was it on like an on-premise installation or you can put, just push code into the, into the point of sales, just out of curiosity. Um, it was a private cloud, semi on premise, um, not the AWS and Azure as we know it today, by the way, I, you know, it's been a long time, so we probably <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't yeah. believe it. We stopped everything since I left. But <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's, let's move into, I think let's move into that. Awesome. So, so, yeah. So let, let me do the transition. So yeah. and I was really frustrated, you know, from the ability of a product team to affect the roadmap, the backlog to manage it. It was really, really driven from customers. Um, and on one hand, it's really nice that it's all being driven for customers because we are selling to customers. But on the other hand, um, it was really big enterprise customers. Yeah. So when I moved to data, so try to do something a little bit different. And um, from day one, it was a complete CICD the, uh, the development uh, uh, methodology. And I remember that I started the company with a prototypes with um, like wireframes, and I moved from hospital to hospital, getting feedbacks mm-hmm. um, as a product manager. And then, and then we started to build the the the, uh, the platform around that, and and basically today what we have is a com- complete continuous development, continuous integration pro- uh, development process that um, basically every time that we we deploy the software to a specific hospital, it's a it's a private cloud implementation. I see. And then okay, and, and, I, I just want to take a step back because most people, I think, I suspect most people on the call don't know what Datos actually does. So let's just take a, like one. Yes. Just, I mean, especially, I mean, I've kind of, you know, I've, I've used, of course, all my marketing skills to write the, the title of this, uh, of this uh, <laughs> webinar. Um, and, and you, but you are indeed kind of like live in the trenches um, and you're kind of like in the midst of helping hospitals and healthcare providers, as well as, of course, patients. Uh, in this whole COVID-19. So if you can tell us a little bit about that, like what do you guys do and like um, how, did yeah. you, how did you end up like in this middle of the crisis kind of thing? So, so Dados is a remote care platform and, and we, we allow, um, it's basically a remote care studio. You, you can design your own remote care program and deploy it and you have a mobile app um, and, and, and dashboards for the care teams. 
But the idea is around a lot around automation and the ease of use around um, building new remote care programs. So let's take the COVID-19, for example. When it started um, here in Israel, um, we work very closely with one hospital, um, the Shiva Hospital. They designed their own um, COVID-19 remote care program. The Ministry of Health actually took that and deployed it throughout Israel. And then other countries like Italy and in the US also took the same program and deployed that um, 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 also globally. And, um, and basically what we did, just um, if we prevent, we allow home hospitalization for the positive COVID-19 patients and basically protect the hospital from overloading uh, with, with patients, but also protect the medical teams from being infected from, 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 the, from the positive COVID uh, patients. I see. So if, I'm, if, I, so if I'm, a, I'm ill, but I'm not super ill, so I don't need to go to the hospital, I can just kind of monitor myself with the Datos platform, and then the teams in the hospital can get it. Like, is that roughly what it is? It's not you monitoring yourself. It's the, uh, in Israel, it's the primary care organizations. They will monitor you. But basically, we allow them to provide care at the comfort of your home, and, um, and, and, and we do that with automation. So we enable a very large scale of, of remote care with very limited resources. Everything is being done automatically with chatbots, with a lot of analytics of the data. I see. That sounds, first of all, that sounds super cool. And then, I mean, Thank in terms you. of, you're welcome. And then in terms of like your, your product vision. So, I mean, you haven't started this for COVID-19. I mean, you started this, as you mentioned, five years ago. I think this was at the time we were all, you know, planes used, you know, used, used to fly then, I remember, <laughs> vaguely, uh, <laughs> not anymore, but uh, it seemed to uh, vaguely remember that. Uh, well, what's going to happen to our status? That's, yeah. that's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, and, um, and, uh, and you start, so you started the remote care just from a, like a gene generic perspective in a way. What was then, like, if you think, like, take like five, four years ago, maybe as, as the product was evolving, what was your product vision? Like what's the high level roadmap? How do you, how do you see it evolve? So we, we, we started the company with a very focused area. We wanted to, to, to solve the problem of how to retrieve, I call it raw patient data, data that you generate at your own home. If you take your blood pressure reading at your own home uh, or taking your glucose or any type of a measurement, how can, how can we take that into your medical record automatically? Right now, it has to go through some kind of a call center. Um, somebody has to look at it and to make sure that you don't have a very high blood pressure at 2 a.m. in the morning. And we should have um, uh, sent you an ambulance, but we didn't. So solving that problem, that was our main vision in, in, in initially. And you can think about it, it's, it's more of, um, um, it's a very objective data, right? Because I'm working with devices. So yeah. that was the entire, and, and, and then we realized, okay, that's nice, but there is also subjective data. Like, I'm, like when I'm asking you how hard was it for you, do you, do you cough? Like in in COVID nineteen, it's something that I cannot measure. I need to ask you a question. Yeah. So we entered all the, the so a couple of years later, the vision of the of the entire company was moved into integrating the two together, the wearable devices and the subjective, the chatbots, all all the uh, subjective data. I see. And then a year ago, we also added the entire telemedicine component above that. So it was like moving target all along. And but but the the, but the main vision is, remains the same. We would like to be the gate. It's not the right word, the, the gateway, but but the, the platform of the remote care for health organization. Right now, we have EMRs and we have many other um, solutions for it for inside the, the the hospital, and they also have point solution for remote care. Okay, I want a solution for diabetes. The, the, the vision is to to to, to be horizontal across all um, areas. And then if you think, I'm so just kind of, you know, out of the curious, I guess, of a lot of the people on the call who are, you know, predominantly product managers and that's kind of like the, the people. So in, how do you do road mapping? So are you kind of like a now, next, later kind of guy? Or are you like a every quarter kind of thing? Or like, I don't care about road mapping, I'm just doing sprints and I'll, I know I have my vision and I'm just running with it. Like, how do you, how does, how do you, and I mean, I'm assuming you're, you know, in practice, not only the CEO, but also the chief product officer. 
Um, so how do you actually run the company? It's so easy when you run the company to manage the roadmap. I'm telling you, it's, uh, you should try it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I hear you. No, but like on a serious note, like how do you, how do you do actual road mapping? Like in terms of like laying it out to the teams and understanding how it goes. So I, I, I think that there's no right answer for that. No, I'm, 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 I'm for your, your I know, I know, I know. No, but, but I'm saying I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to explain what I'm doing, but but I think that it's going to be very different to to, to other areas. Um, for for example, by the way, there are many startups and, and companies that you know you sit and develop, and and you don't see a customer until you know the MVP is like two years down the road. Yeah. And for me, it was not the case. I was uh, all the time. Uh, it was really really important for me, especially in healthcare. That I I know nothing about healthcare. Like, who am I to to don't to tell doctor how to work with the patient? It was really, really important to, to go hand in hand with, uh, with the customers, with development partners. And to be honest, it, the, the roadmap is all the time shaping with them together. Um, we have a huge account right now, for example, in, uh, in, in the US. And it's, it's stretching the, the, the product uh, uh, um, capabilities. Here is another roadmap item. Um, it is, is, it is, you know, we, we really like oncology and cardio, so a lot of the product uh, roadmap would be around that area. A, a lot of the roadmap would be around that area. Um, so there is two layers. One is the strategic roadmap that we, that, that the entire team, they know that we are going in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then there is the, um, the, 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 the short-term roadmap that we, that we work around releases and, uh, and we have a lot of challenges around that and it's not working smoothly. And uh, it's moving, you know, it's a moving target all the time and trying to implement processes. And let me, let me give you the main challenges around product management and roadmap management right now is to provide customers dates. You're working in, in an enterprise mode and they expect you to get them, you know, release dates. On the other hand, we are completely CI, CD, which basically doesn't allow you to provide dates, if you, if you follow what I mean, and, yeah. and, and they don't get it. Like, <laughs> right now, I, I, need to, I, I have a, a huge epic that I need to release and they want exact date. And I'm telling them, look, I, I don't really know. It's, uh, yeah. It's going to come over time and you'll see it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so how did that, so, I mean, that's, I mean, so I'm mixing that. So you're, you're, I mean, you're facing something that I think a lot of enterprise B2B product managers or product leaders would, would face, which is this combo of ad, like agile product management teams on one side and then very non agile customers <laughs> in a way saying like, <laughs> I need to know. And then like the amazing thing about it, then you layer on top of that, a huge sense of urgency because you're in Corona time. Like you're, this is not, I mean, you know, when you did that, you know, you and I know each other for a long time. And I, I remember the, the, the times in the two and three years ago that you were, you were working with your customers, but it was like, yeah, it was urgent, but it was like, okay, this is now, we're now in COVID-19. This is a very unique situation and you're supposed to deliver on time. Otherwise really bad things happen. So how do you manage that tension? like internally, but also with the customers as a product leader? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, not, it's not easy. I, and, and I can, I can tell you what, one thing that's really interesting, it, you, you are moving, and uh, I don't know how many people are on the line are from startups and how many are like doing enterprise, but if, when you're in the startup mode, you are not mission critical from day one. Because, because you're not replacing an existing, usually you're not replacing an existing solution, you, you're bringing a new solution to, to the market and you need to educate the market that they need that new solution. Usually, right? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and for, for us, it was really like from non-critical to mission critical in, 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 in one day. <laughs> and, it, and it was really, really hard and uh, um, um, the entire roadmap and, and backlog management, it was, um, you know, if, if, if me as a CEO, I'm, I'm letting my folks, you know, manage more and trying to em em empower them to, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm on the bits and bytes of what's going to be released in what hour of the day to which customer and to manage that in, 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 a, really, in, in a really tight manner. Because this is a situation right now, and it's also you know you have the, also the sense of urgency. It's like you know it's life of people, and 
So it was not easy. By the way, let me just and I never sidetrack. Um, we as, as a company, we are now 35 employees. Before the Corona days, we worked um, twice, uh, two days a week um, at home on, on a regular basis. Uh, and then the Corona started, everybody went, um, you know, started to work from home. And it was really easy for us to, to do the transition because everybody you know, used to it. However, it was so hectic and, and people started to work from 8 a.m. in the morning until 11, 12 at night, nonstop without any, any breaks. And remember, we, we, we work with the Ministry of Health in Israel, but we also work in the States and the time zones and it was really hard. Um, and even now, you know, I'm, I'm trying all the time to, to push the, the customers to, to go into sprints and to educate them when we're not going to get it tomorrow. It's not easy. It's, um, it's, it's a battle. Yeah, it, sound, it sounds like a huge challenge. Um, and I, I suspect that, you know, especially in, I mean, this is a very unprecedented crisis, right? So I think we all experience that. We all know that. So I think for in, the, in that context, it's really hard to actually manage that level. And that's kind of, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about was exactly because of that. Can you highlight to me, it's a bit of a kind of like, you know, it's a little bit of a, like a newspaper article kind of a question, but, I, but I, I'm just curious and I'm sure some people, what was the moment that you're like realizing that you're in the heart of this thing? As in like, I mean, you went, I mean, you did like remote care and that's very clear, but then at some point, Corona starts, I mean, it's at the beginning, you know, there's like, you know, varying degrees of optimism and, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of like, you know, at the beginning, you know, everybody says it's a flu and it's all fine. At what point, like something switches in your mind and you say, oh, crap, I need to get my act together because this is like, I'm in the heart of this thing. And I know you were also doing a funding round in the middle of all this. So like, that makes it even more, how do you say, yeah. exciting, but let's put the finding aside, like when was that moment and what do you do as a product leader to prepare for that yourself, first of all, and then also the team? First, and, and, and something that I learned personally, be, be, be humble. We don't know, like I know nothing. And in the beginning of the, uh, uh, and, 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 and I learn it all the time, uh, in, in, you know, in, in the hard way. In the beginning, when it all started, I said, okay, guys, you know, it's, um, I'm a remote care um, um, solution. So I'm doing diabetes, I'm doing uh, hypertension, I'm doing um, cardio, uncle. This is a virus. What? I don't have anything to do. I never implemented my solution on, 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 on viruses. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and our largest um, customer actually put together the program and I'm still, I was not there yet. I said, okay, that's nice. But you know, you also, you as a hospital, you don't manage patients at home. You know, this is the, in Israel, it's the HMOs, the primary care physicians in, in, in the state. So, and then I got a phone call from the Ministry of Health. I went to, to Jerusalem. And then I started, with, uh, then I realized that it's going to be big. Now, I didn't realize how big it was until they got, I got another phone call. And they, they told me, look, you see that military uh, group here that they do security or cyber usually? Now they're in your company. And then, it's, then I realized that, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a mission critical somehow because I have a military team in my, in my, in my company. <laughs> I see, I see. And that, did that moment also happen in the US or was that like a little bit less kind of like obvious in the States? Like, uh, like it like was what? really, it's, um, look, the fact that, that I'm here and I cannot, you know, I cannot be in the US in person, it's, it's, it has a tremendous effect on, on, on the, um, but, but also in the, in, in the States, like we, we implemented the solution on several hospitals, but also on the county level. Yeah. And, um, and, and so the county level is a little bit more like, uh, like the Ministry of Health and, uh, and in, in the sense that it's, it's, it's a government-owned organization and, um, and they're, you know, can we use your GPS to track? Uh, so now, now you're thinking about... Yeah, yeah. No, that's... that's yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it becomes... Very... So, okay, I, I want to kind of like, before we kind of go... So we have a couple of questions on the, on, already on the, on the chat. But before we go into, uh, into questions, like what's the one thing, like if you had to synthesize it, 
what is the one thing that you're going to do differently or you're already doing differently since this crisis or since this like, experience rather than call it the crisis? Like, what's the one thing you would say is different? Like, what's your top tip or maybe even top two or three tips? Can, can I, can I just, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I think, I think. I, I, no, let me, let me finish. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I think one thing that I need to be improving and I'm not doing, uh, it's not good enough. And by the way, I always knew, knew that this is important, but I never, there is one position with called program management in, in the development uh, life cycle. And I think it's it's not uh, it's not as it's not you know people not don't realize how important this program uh, th this position is, and if you if you would like the the product management to be more outbound, strategic, and less inbound with with you know dates and planning and all of that, that position is so important, and I still haven't figured that out. Meaning that how I'm going to plug somebody in the in, in, in between the product and the development that will do all this hard work. And basically, once you do it in, in the right manner, um, all the tension, and there is tension between product and development, if there is not something is wrong, all the tension is going down and things started to, 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 to become more um, more smooth. If my one thing without with that for, for you know, one thing that I can advise you, invest in program, program management. So the, the, this is like kind of like the Scrum Master or like, I mean, like in the, it, has, it has different names. I, I know, I mean, Scrum Master, of course, is specific to the Scrum methodology, but the concept is the same in terms of like somebody who is liaising between, in a way, between product and dev and is helping you kind of like run that whole machine. Is what exactly. Doing, right? So that's kind of who, who is doing what? Not on the product side, on the program side. Who is doing what and when? Yeah. Okay. So that's one tip, and then another tip in terms of like more, uh, let's say, for the outbound or for the like more classic product management. What's your other? Um, I want to say work with the market, but it's so different. It's so generic. Um, I, I think that um, um, there, there are a lot of, um, at least in my company, I, you know, there, there is a big difference between um, I, have a, I have a requirement for something versus, um, and, 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 and sometimes it's not like, is that requirement, if I'm going to develop that, am I going to get more revenues? Am I going to, to get more usage? So understanding the goal of each requirement and how it's going to contribute to your product. And maybe, maybe, maybe it's, it doesn't, it's not either of them, but you still think that it is, it is important, to, but, but it's very important to articulate it. So connecting basically goals and, right? So like the development work with the goals and, and the- Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, but, but how, how would you characterize um, NFRs, like non-functional requirements? What, what goal is that in your mind? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I mean, normally it has to, you know, you, know, you should probably find a way to elevate it to a higher goal. I mean, it's could, it could be, by the way, it could be drive, like drive revenue. That could also be a goal, right? So I think that's, you, know, you, can, you can always, um, I mean, so a lot of companies, and I've, I've spoken to a lot of the VP products and, and product leaders in the last couple of months, at this stage in their life, like short-term revenue is a strategic goal across the company, including the product, including the product organization. And that's like, you know, so that's a legitimate, in my mind, that's a legitimate roadmap item, even though it's not, you know, when you think about a classic product roadmap, it might not be a very, you know, it sounds obvious because that's the top line, you know, every commercial company, that's the top line. But, you know, they, you, they say about, like, about the startup sometimes, that, like very young startup, they say like, you know, you should do things that either, fit the strategy or make money, right? So like, I mean, very young, you know, when you're very young, like, and I think that nowadays, because we're in real hardcore crisis land for a lot of companies, you know, short-term revenue or retention is, a, you know, it, it trumps a lot of things in the roadmap, even though it doesn't sound strategic. Right, so I have a completely, in, in, and again, it's because I'm in, in, in healthcare, probably. Um, but in, in in my industry, it's the stickiness. You don't care about revenues. You don't care about any of that. You you want to create that stickiness 
Mm-hmm. That once they, once the customer actually um, um, once you become a mission critical, that's it. You're in, and in healthcare you're probably not going to be out. So revenue will come later on. The stickiness is the most important thing, and also for the product manage, um, uh, managers in my company, you need to make the customer happy to implement that broader as possible, and then the stickiness will 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 uh, will be higher. Yeah. I don't care about the revenues right now. Okay. Especially not in the COVID area, by the way. Because you're saying like, I, it will come. Like, I, I, need to, I, need, yes. I, need, I need the healthcare providers and I need the patients to come in. And if they're using it and it's part of the process, money will come later. And, and in my industry, you know, it's, um, uh, more, m- m- most of our customers are, uh, you know, um, they, they hate risk. And, you know, once you have more and more implementations, you, it's, it's basically, it's, this is my network effect, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, that hospital did that? Okay, I'm going to, I know it's safe. I'm going to do that as well. All right, that's clear. Okay, so I, I'm going to open it up now for people to ask. Uh, thanks a lot for that, of course, Ori, and that's been super, super, super fascinating. Um, so I'm going to open it to some questions. Uh, guys, so please use the, either the Q&A um, uh, section or the chat. I, we have a couple already on it. Um, but before, so, uh, so please feel free to type in your uh, questions uh, to myself or to Uri, more importantly. Um, so I am kind of just going to catch uh, one question here. So uh, which tools are you using for project management and how do you communicate between developers and stakeholders? Do, uh, do they predominantly use Jira and how do you use feedback collection? The answer is craft, by the way. Generically, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. I, I would love to hear. I mean, it's a, it's a good question. I'd love to hear you. I mean, I know you're not using craft right now. I know you are using Jira, right? I think in the... We, uh, we, we do. We, we do. Yeah, we, we use Jira. Um, by the way, I do not have a good product. I'm not using craft. And I also don't, use don't, have, I don't have a good product management tool. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I also, um, I, I'm trying, as I mentioned before, the program. Um, management is really important for me to manage everything that you that you're asking. Right now, we, we use we have like a like a high level Excel, okay. But but you can think about it on the epic level, not on the story level. Mm-hmm. But we can communicate outside high level dates, and then everything is go. The the, the program manager takes that and 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 translate that into Jira. That's what we yeah. do today. It's not the best. Okay, so that's, a, that's in terms of a, a tools. And then, I mean, there was another, it wasn't it's more of a comment, I think, from one of the people on the call saying, uh, working in enterprise-focused startups in the conversational AI market have exactly the same lesson we're learning when it comes to providing a white glove service to our largest customers, but still maintain our sanity when building out our roadmap. Glad to hear we aren't alone. So it sounds like it's, uh, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm not talking BS completely. <laughs> <There's> one, <laughs> what it do that actually relates exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. And then, um, and then I think there's quite a few people here agreeing with you in terms of uh, pro- program management um, is critical for the success. So that's an interesting, it's an interesting call out. And by the way, as a, as a side question to that, do you feel that's part of product, the product organization or... Or that, is that part of the development organization? Just kind of like, I'm sure there's not a right answer to this because you can, of course, you can argue both ways. Most of the, in, in most cases, you will find a program under the dev, under the R&D, uh, VP R&D. Um, I don't think it's that important. It's, um, in, in, for me as a CEO of a company, it's, you know, it can be either way. It's, uh, it, it's the stitch between, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but sometimes I've seen in other, I mean, I think in other, you know, these functions that sit in between functions, you see them behave very differently when they sit in different functions, right? So, I mean, you know, it did happen for, this happens, for example, when you do rollouts and you have somebody in between product and go to market, right? So this, you also have like rollout managers or like, you know, kind of like um, release managers, which is like a, a different, obviously in a different, but like in analogies um, to this concept of saying like, I have two functions, I need somebody to bridge the gap between them. Um, so by, by, the way, by, the way, by the way, if you remember what I said in, initially, w- when I was in, in Retalix and I managed 100 people about, yeah. I also managed the, the, all the, all the, all the uh, business owners and, 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 and you know, the, the guys that, that, that wrote the, the stories. And this is also not u- unusual, basically. It, it is unusual for, for many of the, I, I think, by the way, if, if, if from, from an org perspective, 
This is the most important thing in my mind. If you are a product company, all the BAs, the business analysts, or product owners, and, and they all have to be under the product um, uh, uh, team. And um, yeah, and this is not the way that it works in, in most cases. Yeah, I've seen, so I, actually, I've seen, I've seen a trend kind of like going in that direction right now. So I, I actually, I mean, when you speak, so it, it, traditionally it was exactly that. It was product managers, was in the product organization, and product owners, you know, they like, or inbound kind of, uh, you know, it was like very much uh, a development kind of function. But I'm seeing more and more companies actually bringing that into the product land, understanding actually that, you know, this glue should sit in the product organization and this, like the story writing, you know, it's a skill set on its own that requires a little bit out of the, like outside of the dev world, like outside thinking to the actual code writing. So it's, it's, it probably fits more. I, I agree with you that it probably fits more into the product world than into the development world. Um, yeah, no, I think that's, um, unless anybody has any additional questions, um, doesn't look like it. Um, so unless anybody has any other comments or questions, if you do, please also feel free to uh, uh, fire. Well, one thing, by the way, if, yeah. if I may, if that's okay of with course, you. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, one advice that, that, that goes along, you know, that, that, um, it's not really advice, it's like a, a motive, but something that, that, that everywhere that I go, it's, it's, always a, it's always an issue to, to manage, is the difference between the what and the how. And product managers, many times, they don't really understand the difference. Like, um, and I think that if, if you look at the entire uh, um, relationship between the product and the dev, mm -hmm. answering that question and focusing on that question will solve a lot of the hassle around the communication between the two groups. Mm -hmm. because, pro because the developers, in my experience, they like to be told what to do, but they don't like to be told how to do it. And um, like, tell them, t t t tell them what you're trying to solve, and let them solve it. No, no, I completely agree. I think it's a, it's a very good uh, piece of advice. Cool. Uh, thank you for that, Uri. And thanks a lot for your time and, uh, and for sharing. And I, I really, you know, for the sake of all of us, I wish you a lot of success because I think you're, thank you're, you. you're I mean, it's one of those weird coincidences that you're not only just doing a startup, you're doing a startup that actually is genuinely helping a lot of people stay safe and healthy. So that's like, you know, super cool. And you know, really just, just for the record, I, I want the graphs to go down, by the way, even though that I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we all, I think we all want to go, we all want to go back to normal, even if it means that, you know, your MRR or your ARR might go down a little bit. Exactly, right? yeah. I, no, I, I appreciate that. So, and everybody, for everybody on the call, really appreciate uh, your comments and your question. And if you have any more questions, feel free to just uh, send them uh, our way. Um, we'll send the recording afterwards and you'll be able to uh, follow up uh, with myself and with Uri. So uh, with that in mind, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks Thank everybody you. who's uh, been uh, on it and uh, have a great and safe uh, rest of the week. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.